with the mexp function within Excel, we can take the number E, which represents 2.7, 1828, 1828, etc., and take this to the power of a complex number. Now, the function itself is quite simple. We simply write mexp, and this will return the exponential of a complex number. So then we supply just one argument, which is the complex number. Now, the complex number within Excel is represented by a string, so not a regular number. So I represent the complex number here. It can either be represented using an I or a J for the imaginary part. I close the parentheses and out comes the result. So this is E to the power of two plus I. This is the result we're getting. And this is the result for E to the power of two plus two I. Now, at first glance, it might look a bit weird to take E and then bring this to the power of a complex number. However, do keep in mind that the exponential fun function where we have E as a base and then we have an exponent to this E can be represented with a Taylor series. Now the Taylor series looks as following. We take the exponent and bring this to the power N where N represents a whole number. And then we divide this by the factorial of N. Now we do this for every possible value of N up until infinity and then add all of these values together. And that is the end result of this exponential function. Now let's take a simple example. Let's say you want to take e to the second power. That would look like this. So if we now apply the Taylor series, that would look like this. So we take two and then we bring this to the power of n. So we start with n at zero and divide this then by the factorial of n. So we take the fact function within Excel, which returns us the factorial of whichever number is given. And I close the parentheses. Now, if you're not familiar with factorials, now if I take the factorial of four, it is represented with four and an exclamation point, and this is equal to four times three times two times one. So you take the number and multiply it with every number that came before it. Okay, so now we simply pull this down and we get a whole bunch of numbers. In this case, I have done 10 instances of this Taylor series, but in essence, it really continues up until infinity but we should still be able to get some kind of approximation. So let's add all of these numbers together with a sum function, just like this, press enter, and there you get 7.38895. Now let's compare this to the actual result of e squared. That would be the exponent function of the number two. I close the parentheses, and as you can see, it's pretty close. It's not exactly the same, and that's because we stopped the Taylor series after 10 instances, but if we would have continued this up until infinity, it would have matched exactly. Now this Taylor series is another way to look at taking the power of something, right? Because I could have also done the exponent of one, right? Which is 2.71828, and then multiply this with itself, right? So then I do exponent of one times the exponent of one. I press enter and you can see we get exactly the same result. So two ways to end up with the same result. But whenever we are working with complex numbers, it's better to look at the exponential function as this sum of this Taylor series. Okay, so here we have two plus two i as our complex number that we will use as the exponent to the number e. Okay, so this is what represented as z in our formula. So we reference this number two plus two i, and I make sure to absolutely reference it using the shortcut F4, which will place dollar signs in front of the letter and the number. So we are always referencing this number. Then we take this to the power of n, which is to the left-hand side, and divide this by the factorial of n, which is also on the left-hand side. I press enter and we are getting an error. Now, the reason why this is happening is because complex numbers within Excel are represented as strings or text. And as such, we cannot use regular math operations to calculate with them. We need to use special Excel functions specifically designed to work with complex numbers. So first of all, here, when we brought our complex number to the power of n, we need to use an m power function to accomplish this. So I write m power. And how it works, you give in two arguments. The first argument is the complex number. And the second argument is the real number that you want to use as the exponent to this complex number. So I wrap this as such. And then we also have this division, which we can also not do when working with uh, complex numbers. We need to use a specific function, which is called the mdiv function, which allows us to perform a division when working with complex numbers. So 
The first argument to the mdiff function would be the complex number, right? Where we took the complex number to the power of n, and then we divide this by the factorial of this n. So that would be the second number. I make sure to close my parentheses and press enter. And there we have the result. Okay, so now let's pull this down for each 10 instances. There we have the result. I will extend this so you can see the entire complex number. And just like we did before, now we will be adding all of this together. Now, once again, we cannot simply add all of these numbers together using a sum function or a plus signs because we are working with complex numbers. So we need a special Excel function called msum, which allows us to add complex numbers together. So I select all of the complex numbers. I close the parentheses and press enter. And there we have the final result. Now we can compare this to the result we got when we use the mx function, where we supplied the complex number, in this case, 2 plus 2i. And there we have the result of the exponential function applied to a complex number. And you can see it matches pretty closely. Of course, there are still some discrepancies as we go down the digits. But if we would extend this Taylor series further up until infinity, it would eventually match. So that's what's going on behind the scenes when we are using the mxp function. Thanks for subscribing and leaving an optional tip. Consider watching this video next.